Hello and welcome. I'm Betty McNitt and tonight I'm going to start a six day supernova blanket. I'm going to work the whole thing from start to finish on lives. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, <clears throat> but if you like, you can crochet along with me. I'm going to do my best to go slow and explain everything from the beginning to the end. I don't know what I'm thinking, but that's what I'm going to do. So come along for the ride if you like. Um, I'm going to, I have been doing stash today's the last day of September. And so this started as a stash bus September trend where I was going to bust this stash of Ogos that I had. I made a star and a supernova blank, super star, sorry, star and superstar blanket with, um, sc scrap yarn. And I wanted to do all three, the star, the superstar and the supernova, but I had some travel that I was doing in September and then I got really sick when I got back from my second trip. And so I never got to doing the supernova and <clears throat> I still have a lot of those scraps left, but I just decided that I don't want to do scraps for this. I'm going to use these um, beautiful Mandela bonus bundles that I bought a few months ago. Um, and I have three of this one and the name of the color is Chewy. So it's really, of course, it doesn't show up really nice on camera, but um, it's just these beautiful, like soft peach, um, blue and gray tones. And so this is, I have three of these. So this is what I'm going to use. Um, when you're doing a supernova, um, the star, the superstar, and the supernova are all very similar. But when you do the supernova, you want to be, it's for when you want to make a little bit of a bigger blanket because you have to do so many um, repetitions after you add the little points in. So the star blanket has seven large points and the superstar has 14 smaller points. The supernova has seven large and seven small points. So it, it's actually worked the same as the star blanket to a point. And then you add these additional points. And after you add the points, you want to at least do like one or two repeats. So you're, you'll end up with a little bit bigger blanket. So the supernova is when you are, want to make a big, big blanket. And then I knew there was something I forgot. I should have pulled up the pattern before I started. I just, I have a lot of this stuff memorized, so I don't always um, follow the pattern <laughs> as I do it. <laughs> Oops. But um, let me pull that up and then I can give you some more specifics about how much yarn and everything that is needed for it. Supernova, I wrote. Let me find it. Supernova. Oh, wait, let me try this way. The pattern is free on my site if you are looking for it. Um, I just can't seem to find it on my desktop right now. Duh! Star blankets. Okay, here we go. Supernova blanket. Let's see what it says about yardage. So you can really make these blankets in any weight of yarn. I've never made the supernova in anything but a three. I don't know why. Let me think about the, yeah, maybe a four. Um, I don't know why, maybe, I, I don't know why, but anyways, I give um, yardage for um, a DK weight, 1,200 for a 14-inch baby blanket and 2,000 for a 60-inch uh, throw size blanket. 
And then for worsted weight, I have approximately a thousand for a 40 inch baby blanket blanket and 2,400 yards for a 60 inch throw size blanket. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Chicky Channel TV. Okay, so um, there you have it. And then uh, with the mandala, which is a three weight, I'm going to start with an H hook and probably go up to an I for these star blankets because they're not quite 360 degrees. You need to use really loose tension when you make them. So, okay. So I'm going to start with the H, which is, I believe, a four millimeter and a four and a half. I think that's what these are. Thank you very much. Um, Nicole says nice hooks. These are the Furls Odyssey crochet hooks, which sadly have been discontinued. So I don't know what I'm going to do for hooks after this. Hi, thanks for following. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get right to it. I'm going to put this device overhead. And then if you don't like the view here on TikTok, you can go over to YouTube or Facebook. And it's a little, it's just a little different over there. Uh, here we go. And like I said, I'm going to try and do this. Hi, Wanda. I'm going to try and do this really nice and slow tutorial style. And I'm also going to try and do the entire thing on camera because I don't think I've ever done that. And that's just for the people who like to crochet along and like to um, follow along and for the entire blanket. <clears throat> so it'll be a little bit of everything. There we go. Okay. Oh, and I think I forgot to do that. Okay. Let's bring that pattern up again. Make sure I do this right. Hi, Pat. So all three of the star blankets, the star, the superstar, and the supernova, all start with the same eight setup rounds. And then the superstar has an additional three setup rounds and then it changes, but the supernova actually starts out exactly like the six day star blanket does. Um, it, and it continues the same for um, the first almost two full repeats of the pattern. So I'll just get started. Um, the pattern is on my website, uh, bettymcnitt.com. And just Google the six day supernova blanket. This is the supernova. Okay, so you want to start with the hook. Let's see, what does this yarn label say to use? You're welcome. I'm going to do my best to go slowly. So this is 1181 yards. I'm probably going to use two of them. I might go into the third one, just depending on how big I want to make it. Um, and I'll update the pattern. Also, if I find that it's, I did something different than this says to use an H hook which is a five millimeter. I think I said that wrong before. So I have a five and I have a five and a half. So start with the lab the one on the hook, on the label. If you know you have tight tension, start with something bigger. If you know you have loose tension, maybe go smaller. But for this project, you're gonna need really loose tension. So I would have a hook, at least one hook, a half millimeter larger than what the pattern says. Okay, so we start by chaining four, two, three, four, and then slip stitch to join. Okay, now I don't wanna get on one of my soap boxes here, but y'all know that I don't like magic knots and I don't like the magic ring for starting blankets. 
and the reason for that is I just don't think it's secure and I also don't feel like this center of this has to be tightly closed. To me, that um, feels like a, a technique that's more appropriate for amigurumi. But if you're going to do it and you want to start with one of those magic loop things, um, just make sure you secure it tightly, okay, so that it doesn't come out because that your whole blanket is is dependent on that. Okay, round one, chain three, which counts as one double crochet, and then we're going to do 13 double crochet into the ring. Thank you, Miss Cece. Appreciate you. Two. I'm going to try and go slow for you guys. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so you should have thirteen double crochet and one chain three, one, two. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it should be 14. And then you're going to slip stitch into the top of this chain 3. Hold on. Some people put a stitch marker in that chain 3 so that they don't have to struggle like what I'm doing right now to get it, get it on the way back. But I always forget <laughs> until I'm on a live like this and then someone says, I put a stitch marker in mine and you would think I would remember by now because I've done this so many times. We go there it is what am I trying to do I'm trying to slip stitch into there I should put it in backwards All right, I don't know why that was so hard tonight. Slip stitch. <clears throat> I'm on my last cough drop too.
Okay, where's my friend Andrew? Round two, ding, ding, ding. Chain three, one, two, three. And then you're gonna double crochet into that same stitch. This time I'll remember to mark it. You want to mark the chain three. And then you're going to do two double crochet in each stitch around. Hi, I'm doing the supernova blanket. One of the nicest things about using cake yarn is you don't have all the ends to weave in. But when you're doing this blanket, the star, six day star, superstar, or supernova, you want to do a little bit of color control on like maybe the first eight or so rounds. So you don't want any mid row color changes. On those beginning rounds it just looks funny whoops I missed one The yarn is the Lion Brand Bonus Bundle and the name of the color is Chewy. Okay, and join with a slip stitch in the top of the chain. I'm probably going to struggle again. Okay, then <clears throat> one thing I do after I weave my yarn end around is I go up I use the end and I close those little gaps when I'm all done. This is the six day supernova blanket. Do I have a sticky or something I can write that on? I'm gonna have to say it eight million times if I don't. I don't have one, I'll bring one for tomorrow. So you should have 28, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 20, wait a minute, 28, yes, okay, I don't think I counted any twice. I know there's a way you can write it on the live, I thought I did. But people still ask. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, so I'm on round three, chain three, double crochet. Okay, notice that the pattern does not say double crochet in the same stitch. If the pattern wants you to double crochet in the same stitch, it will say in the same stitch. But if it says two double crochet, that means one double crochet and another double crochet. Okay, so um, chain three, double crochet, chain three, one, two, three, two double crochet. So that means one double crochet in one stitch and then one double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, two double crochet. And then it says repeat from the star. So it's chain three, two double crochet. Chain one, two double crochet. And there's also a difference when you, um, when the pattern says repeat from the star and when it says repeat from the star to two stars or whatever, repeat from this to this. So when it says repeat from the star, it doesn't necessarily mean repeat from star to star. Sometimes it'll say repeat from the star until, until something, until six stitches remain or until um, you reach the last peak or the last stitch or something like that. And usually when it says that, it means that you aren't necessarily repeating the entire sequence of stitches on the last time. You just keep repeating it until you get to that point. And then you do whatever it says after that. So the repeat is chain three, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. And it ends with chain one and a slip stitch into the top of chain three, which I forgot to mark again. I think I'm struggling a little bit because I've been working with chunky weight yarn and now I'm going down to a size three. There we go. You should have 28 double crochet with seven chain three spaces and seven chain one spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then seven chain one spaces, three, four, five, six, seven. And so everywhere there's a chain three space, that's going to be one of your points. And everywhere there's a chain one space, there's going to be a valley. So we already have the little baby star starting.
Oh, this is interesting. So I used to have you go back into this space and <clears throat> start with the double crochet three together, but now I have you slip stitch. This is set up round four. Slip stitch into the double crochet and then slip stitch into the chain space and then chain three. Two double crochet. Chain three. Three double crochet. See how I'm starting to make the points. So every one of these points is going to have three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in the chain three spaces and every chain one space is going to have a double crochet three together. Okay, double crochet three together in the chain one space. And then three, three, three in the chain three space. And you're going to do that all the way around. Three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in the chain three space. Double crochet three together in the chain one space. Double crochet three together in the chain one space. Three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in every chain three space. This is set up round four, I believe. One, two, three, four, yep.
three, three, three in the peak, on the chain three space rather, just a little baby peak. Hi, thanks for following. So the star, the superstar, and the supernova all start out the exact same way. Just like this, for the first eight rounds. The first eight rounds of the star and the superstar and the supernova are exactly alike. And it finishes with a slip stitch in the starting chain three. Okay, so there's your round setup round four. Okay, set up round five. This is the one where it gets weird. So you're going to slip stitch into this space right below. And then chain two. And then double crochet two together. You know what? I wonder if that will work without the slip stitch. Let me just try it. What if I just did a chain two and then double crochet three together, work two together, working into that space. Yeah, it pretty much works the same. But basically, whenever we go backwards in crochet, it makes people crazy. Amanda says, I'm starting a supernova with you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'll do a I'll do a swag for anyone that does a supernova along with me. When we all get done, I still haven't sent out the swag gifts from the last thing I did, but um, I'll do I'll do a swag at the end of this. When we get to the end together, if we ever get there, <laughs> once we get there, and then y'all tag me in that video and show me your completed supernovas and I'll do a swag gift for anyone that goes along with me. Uh, <clears throat> or I'll, I'll pick some, I'll pick one, I should say. Um, I'll choose uh, some people to give swag to. Okay, what was I thinking? Okay, yes, I was saying that anytime you, you know, I'm a right-handed crocheter, so I work from right to left. Anytime you have to go against that in crochet patterns, I've noticed it is, um, it drives people crazy. We just don't know what to do with ourselves. So let's just chain two and then work a double crochet two together into that space. We're only going backwards just a little bit. It's no big deal, okay? So now um, each of these double crochet three togethers is gonna be a valley, and each of these chain three spaces is going to be a point. So we're going to do one double crochet three together on each side of these, of the double crochet three together in the previous row. And then we're going to do a three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in each of the points. So that's what this round is going to look like. This is set up round five. And um, I just determined you don't really have to slip stitch. You can just chain two 
and double crochet two together into the space and then three, three, three in the chain three space. I don't think I'd like that. If you slip stitch first, all the posts will come out of the space. Just my opinion. Okay. I was just thinking I wish I could find the pages at the other document on here so I could edit as I'm going along, but maybe I'll just leave it like that. I'll just let that be a do as I say, not as I do moment. In other words, follow the pattern. And if you decide there's a little adjustment that you'd like to make that you like better, you can do that and we will, I will never have to know. <laughs> Nobody will ever have to know. As you always say, trust the pattern. Sometimes I don't trust it myself because I field so many questions. You know, I start to question myself like, did I really do that the right way? Did I really write that the best way? Could there be a better way? Trying to go really nice and slow so people can follow along. Whoops. Thanks for the shares and follows. How's everyone doing? Karen Wagner says, I'm fascinated by the star blanket. I will be making it right behind you. Cool. The star, the superstar, and the supernova all start out with the same eight setup rounds. I'm starting to get a little bit of curling, so I'll probably go up to my um, next hook, a little bit bigger hook on the next round. This is usually about where I start to get a little bit of curling. If you've made a lot of six day blankets and this is your first six day star blanket, one of the um, easiest things to do is to get confused between the six day kid blanket and six day star blanket. In the um, bottom of the valley, as I like to call it, on the regular six day blanket, 
There are two double crochet. Oh, there's a knot in my yarn. Um, there are two double crochet three togethers in the bottom of the valley separated by a skip by four st stitches. So a skip four. In the star blanket, the um, row two has one double crochet three together in the center of the valley and then two double crochet three together on the uh, in row three so it is a little different than the regular six day blanket and sometimes sometimes I see people making blankets and they're trying or making the star and they're trying to skip four in the valley and um, they don't it doesn't really translate exactly hi Catherine from Michigan now we're gonna do um, three double crochet chain three three double crochet in the peak And then it finishes with a slip stitch in the top of the first double crochet three together. Exclusive Essence says, how did you come up with this design? People nagged at me to make the six day kit blanket into a granny square granny style afghan starting in the center and working your way around and a star shaped version and I never wanted to do the granny one because I thought it, that <clears throat> it would only be six day kid blanket if it's chevroned and then uh, people just nagged at me enough until I it got like it became like a puzzle that I had to solve so I, um, I was, I did this because I was trying to do the six day kid blanket in the round also with a chevron. So this is what I came up with a star shape. And just like the six day kid blanket, I never imagined that it would be as popular as it is. Never, never. <laughs> Amy says, getting my supernova back out as soon as I finish dinner. I think I stopped at setup round four. Okay, so this is setup round six. Okay, this little business right here, chain one and single crochet in the same stitch. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to mark on YouTube. I can come in really close. Excuse me. I want you to mark the stitch that you just made. That is where you're going to slip stitch when you come back around. You're not going to slip stitch here. That's your slip stitch from the row before. And you're not going to slip stitch here. That's your chain one. You're going to slip stitch into the top of the single crochet. So this is going to be the last stitch you're going to make a single crochet into. And then you're going to skip over these two. They don't count. They're not stitches to, for you to work. And then you're going to slip stitch into this one. Okay. <coughs> That's a common mistake that throws your counts off. Okay, and then it's single crochet in every stitch around, and then three in the peak. And because people make this mistake, very common mistake here, of mistaking these two things as stitches, 
um, there's a lot of concern about stitch counts. So you should have eight in between the peak. Three, one, one, three. Okay, so you should have eight single crochet in between each peak. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I forgot to change hooks. You know what, let me just try to remember to change on the next round rather than confusing people. Five, seven, eight, sorry. Yeah, I did hear that they're gonna stop making them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or that they have stopped and they sold all the rest of what they had left. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna have to design my own crochet hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then three in the peak. One, two, three. I know, I'm so sad too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a really beautiful design. I'm glad they nagged. I'm glad they nagged me too. <laughs> Sometimes I have to just get over myself. <laughs> Get out of my own way, you know, all those things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, I prefer their older design. They changed the design several times, and I prefer the older version. So I guess I'm just stuck with what I have or buying them. I bought a few secondhand. One, two, three, four, three. Okay. And then eight going across. So I, you know, I don't put, uh, I don't think I have put a total stitch count on this star. Um, if you, as long as you have eight in between the peaks and three in each peak, you don't really need to know how many there are total. I mean, people just get so like, um, concerned about their mistakes and looking in the wrong place to fix them. You should have eight in between the peak and three in each peak. And if you really need to know how many that is, just get out your calculator and do some math. Um, but I'm not sitting here counting every single stitch in the round. One, two, three. Four. Okay, so that's my last single crochet. And I'm going to skip my slip stitch and I'm going to skip my chain up and I'm going to go right to the first single crochet of my round. Okay, that's how you do it. This curling is not that severe. I probably could continue without changing hooks, but I'm going to change. Um, <clears throat> it probably would be okay. But you have to make the call. You don't want to have this blanket that ends up with like a cup in the middle of it. Thank you, Exchange Essence. Appreciate you.
Okay, so that was set up round six. And so far, the star, superstar, and supernova blanket all start like this, okay? Nothing is different. Okay, here's the other mistake. I'm going on to set up round eight. This is the other mistake that people make, and then <clears throat> they think that they have the wrong number of stitches because of this mistake. <clears throat> I had to join with a slip stitch at the end of my last round. Setup round eight starts with slip stitch in the next double crochet. So I don't know what happens to people's brains if they think, well, I already did a, just did a slip stitch, so I'm good. I don't have to do another one, okay? But you have to do another one because we need to move over one stitch, okay? So you slip stitch to move over. This feels like giant next to, next to that other hook I was just using. See, this is an H and this is an I, and these both look like the newer versions. But they are, we're kind of known for being inconsistent. Yeah, this is a J hook. This is a six millimeter hook. This is not an I hook. Okay, so I have to go find myself an I hook. I think I know Here we go. Set up round seven, yes. Okay, and this is a, see these, um, this is one of the older style ones, I believe. See how it's more tapered and this it's streamlined. Naomi, is there any way to make the blanket bigger? Yes, you can use a heavier yarn. You can use a four or a five or a six weight yarn, or you can just keep going. And keep going and going until it's as big as you want. <clears throat> okay I feel okay about this hook so what did I do did I let me go back okay so round set up round seven it starts with a slip stitch in the next stitch so there is a slip stitch at the beginning of the row you joined with a slip stitch at the end of the last row, and now we're starting with another slip stitch. Chain three. Hang on, what's happening over here? Let me make sure I can see everything. Can't see people's comments. There we go. Three double crochet. And remember that means, you, unless it says you do them all in the same stitch, you work across your stitches. One, two, three, and then five in the center stitch of the round below. And then four double crochet. One, two, three, four, skip two, 
four double crochet one two three four and then it says repeat so five double crochet in the peak stitch three four five four double crochet one two three four skip two one two three four and then five in the peak one two three four five Okay, so this is how this row is going to go. Five in the peak, four going up, four going down. Skip two in the valley. What happens with my hooks is um, I leave the hooks with the project so I don't forget what hook I was using with it. And then I have to go digging around for my most often used hooks, even though I buy multiples in like H, I, and J. Those are my most often used hooks. Um, I leave them with other stuff. I leave them in the projects. Skip two. Four double crochet, five in the peak. One, two, three, four. Four going down, skip two, four going up. Four going down. One, two, three, four. Okay, one little hack that I have is when you are, I have an end right there, so it's going to make this, okay. Um, when you are coming down the valley, your last double crochet always lines up between the middle and the last double crochet of the last cluster coming down. Okay, I'll show you again when it gets bigger because it's a little easier to understand. 
but it's just like a little landmark that you can use to make sure you're on the right track whether you count or however if you like to count your stitches or not however you do it <clears throat> Okay, now this is going to look like I'm skipping three down here because you have a slip stitch right there. But this is your last stitch of the row is line, going to line up with the um, end of that double crochet cluster. And then you're going to slip stitch. Whoops. Oh my goodness. I am having the hardest time with this tonight. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Into the chain three. That was set up round seven. Okay, set up round eight, slip stitch. Again, you slip stitch in the beginning of the row, chain three, four double crochet. Oh wait, hold on. Excuse me. Okay. I want to do the ridgy ditch in this blanket. So unlike the other blankets where I was changing colors at this round, I'm using cake yarn for this one. So I don't want to cut and change my color. So this is how I'm going to, this is how I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. It's going to be a little bit different than what's on the pattern. So when I make that slip stitch, I'm going to go from back to front. Okay, because I want my yarn to end up on the other side, and then I'm going to turn. Okay, and then slip stitch one. <clears throat> and then again around the second one, and then chain three. <clears throat> okay, so I'm setting up for ridgy ditch. This is set up round eight. I'll do it again. Okay, so if you don't want to do ridgy ditch, you just slip stitch and you keep going. But if for I'm gonna do ridgy ditch, so I'm gonna do my last slip stitch of this of of uh, round seven. Set up round seven from back to front. Okay and then turn and then slip stitch once and then slip stitch around the front post of the next stitch chain three okay that's how you ridgy ditch with without changing the um without cutting and restarting a new yarn okay and then from here i'm following the pattern but it's for front post double crochet i'm working front post for the double crochets okay and then the center stitch i'm doing five double crochet just like the pattern says And then five front post double crochet. Okay, 
skip two, and then five front post double crochet. and then five front posts double crochet Five in the peak. And then five going down. Whoops. One. Two. Three, four, five, skip two, one, two, three, four. Five, and then five in the peak. Why do I feel like I'm not in the peak? Oh, I am. One. So when you do the ridgy did, you still do the, you work the peak stitches right into the top of the stitch and not around the post. So on round, um, on the second double crochet round, we're replacing the double crochet with front post double crochet and we flipped the blanket. The original superstar, super star, superstar and supernova are all worked from the same side. So if you don't want to work the ridgy ditch, you just keep going on the other side. <clears throat> and you don't work front post. And if you want to do the ridgy ditch and you don't want to flip, you can do back post double crochet instead of um, instead of flipping and doing front post. But I wanted a way to make the blanket reversible.
five front post double crochet, five double crochet in the peak, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, what is the purpose of changing hook sizes and which direction do you go up or down? Um, well, I have just found that I like starting with a smaller hook and, um, I like the stitches to, you know, I like the tension to be a little tighter and in the beginning. And if, when I experience curling, I go up a half a hook size, then you can start with the half hook size larger, but you will need a slightly larger hook than you would for a back and forth blanket. Um, just because it's not quite 300, it's only got seven points. So it's not quite 360 degrees. So you need a little extra, you need the yarn to be nice and loose so that it can go all the way around without, um, without curling up your blanket. And then slip stitch into the top of the chain three. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with slip stitch tonight. Okay, so that's what the ridge looks like on the other side. It's more pronounced if you change colors, but I'm just going with whatever the yarn gives me, I'm sticking with that this time. Okay. Thanks for sharing the live. You haven't tackled the star yet? Oh, it's the easiest one. Okay, so if you're doing the star, the superstar, or the supernova, what, no matter what you're doing, all set up eight, first eight setup rounds are the same. So if you want to continue with the star from here, you can. If you wanted to um, do a super star, you'd have to switch to the other pattern because set up round, or there are set up round 9, 10, and 11, I think. So it's going to be a little different after here for the, um, for the super star. But for the star and the supernova, stay on the same um, <clears throat> same path together okay now set up round nine chain one this is going to be the same thing as um the last single crochet round single crochet in the same and in each stitch around okay so again i'm going to mark my single crochet so that i don't come back and mistake some of these guys here like my slip stitch or my chain up I don't want to mistake those for stitches this is my lat going to be my last single crochet of the round and then I'm going to join to here okay so it's um it says single crochet in this e 
same stitch and each stitch around making four single crochet in the center double crochet three four Okay, so single crochet in each one around and then four in the peak. Thanks so much for saying so. Okay, now one thing it doesn't say here that probably would help a lot of people if it did say you should have 14 single crochet in between each peak. So I am going to dig up the, um, the file for this so that I can add that. Because it does not give a stitch count at the end of this round. You should have four in each peak and 14 in between peaks. Oh, thank you. It is Lion Brand uh, Bonus Bundle, Mandala Bonus Bundle, and it's the color Chewy. Yep, 14. I'm just counting them for you. And then four in the peak. One, two, three, four. And then 14 in between. Okay, I hope that helps. And this is, we're on setup round nine. Yep, 14 in between, and then four in the peaks. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I've got seven single crochet. Don't work into that, that's your slip stitch. Don't work into that, that's your chain up. And then slip stitch into the top of the 
single crochet. Oh, my camera died. Okay, I'll probably have to take a little break now because um, my camera, I don't know what is going on with Ecamm that it doesn't bring the camera right back up when I change the battery. It's so weird. I should really call this crochet a six day ridgy ditch. So I forgot I was gonna do the um, ridgy ditch on this one. never tried updating the titles while the video was in progress. We'll, we'll see if it fixes it <laughs> or what it does. I have this little failed design here for my um, like coaster for my oils and stuff. I have this um, lymphatic massage oil, which is what I use on my hands to help with any puffiness. Um, and I use this um, massage tool called a face blaster. They're in my Amazon store. No, so that's a good question. Amanda says, Beth, if we turn our work for round eight, do we turn again for round nine? No, you're going to continue um, to work on this side of the blanket until the next um, double crochet round. Um, you're going to work the first double crochet round on this side and then flip um, to, uh, to, to make the ridge. So the ridge side is going to alternate, um, alternate sides and your blanket will be reversible. So it'll have a front, it won't, it won't be like the star blanket. Usually we only work from one side and it has a front and it has a back side. Most people can't tell the difference between back and front on a crochet blanket, but on this one, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have right side stitches on some rows and wrong side stitches on some rows. So it'll be reversible. It'll have right side stitches on both sides. And then the ridge will flip sides. And the reason I did that is because 
some of the um, some of the people that helped me with pattern development in my membership community, they were saying that they did not like having the ridge on every on the star blanket on every single um, round uh, six. They felt like it was too many, so they were alternating how many times how many, you know they were alternating the rounds, and I thought, well, we could just flip it. And then it would be on alternate sides. If you want to do it on every round, or even if you want to alternate rounds, you don't have to flip it. You can continue on the same side and you can do back post double crochet instead. I just, I don't enjoy doing that stitch. I prefer to do front post. So that's another reason why I flipped it. <clears throat> Yeah, so um, my first ridge, y'all can't see me on YouTube. I don't know why. Let's try and see if I can get that back on mine now that I've taken my little break. It's still not come back. You know, when you're following along my video tutorials, you should always also follow the pattern. Don't try to just do it from just the video. So yeah, the pattern will tell you how many to start with, how to start it. I'm going to weave these ends in and that'll just give me something to do while I'm waiting for that, for my software or whatever to get done thinking. This is where I remember I said I close up the little gap. And while I'm doing that, I just weave it in. Okay, let's see if it's ready now. Still not ready.
there it goes. All right, here we go. We're back online. All right, so what round was I on? That was set up round nine. Now I'm going to be on round two. Okay, so the way that the six day, I, the way that I numbered my patterns is rounds two and three are always the granny rounds. Rows four and seven are always the single crochet rounds. And rounds five and six are always the double crochet rounds. Okay, so, excuse me, we're on um, round two, starts with a chain two, double crochet two together in the same stitch. Skip two, one, two, three double crochet in the next. Skip two, three double crochet in the next. Okay, when it says in the next stitch, it wants you to put them all in the same. And then skip two, and we're going to do three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in the peak. Skip two, three double crochet. Skip two, three double crochet. And then double crochet three together in the center of the valley. Are there any stitch alongs in the near future? You know, I do this because I like going live and engaging and so sometimes it's just kind of off the cuff and this one is off the cuff. So I'll be working on this one for a while and then in the future, down the line, I think, um, I think a blanket that I have not done enough video for is the Great Granddaddy blanket. So I'm thinking about revisiting the Great Granddaddy and making some updates to that pattern and doing some video content for it. So when I figure out what I'm doing, I mean, the best thing is just to follow me on here and in the Facebook group. Sometimes I announce what I'm doing and sometimes I don't. Lila's Creation says, what does that blanket look like? It looks like um, a rectangular granny square, but it uses six day blanket stitches. So it goes um, two granny rows, single crochet, two double crochet rows, single, cro uh, single crochet. So it has this, it does has the six day stitches, which is alternating granny and double crochet and single crochet like this. Okay. Okay. So this is the pattern repeat around, um, skip two, three double crochet. Skip two, three double crochet. I used to do a lot more like six day crochet alongs and things like that. 
and um, there are a lot of work, and then only a handful of people really fully participate. So I just do what, like, um, when I, I feel like, like this blanket in particular, it does not have a lot of um, tutorial content on my YouTube channel about it. So I've been meaning to do this for a while. And um, now here I am, I'm doing it, Supernova. Skip two, double crochet in that center, uh, double crochet three together in that center stitch in the valley. And it should work out just right. Skip two, three, double crochet. And this is why I say don't fudge if, you know, as you're going along with the star, figure out what you did because this row has, you know, it has to, the numbers have to work out. If your numbers aren't working out exactly, try to make sure you have your 333 in your peak and then two sets of three double crochet going down each side and then the um, double crochet three together in the center of the valley. You know, and this pattern works with, ooh, I think my yarn is starting to change colors. Attention, everybody. My yarn is changing colors. Um, this blanket you can pretty much make with any yarn, so you don't need any notice. Grab something from the stash and work it up. I don't know what that dinging is. Double crochet, three double crochet together in the center valley. Skip two, three double crochet. Skip two, three double crochet. Skip two, three, three, three in the peak. Skip two, three double crochet. So you should have two clusters going up each side. Three, three, three in the peak. 
and double crochet three together in each valley and it should work out perfectly. You should have skipped two between every single um, group of stitches. I don't know what it is about the yarn changing colors. It makes me so happy. I've got some variegated yarn that I didn't know what to do with. This pattern will be perfect. Is it variegated or is it self-striping? I mean, the uh, six-day patterns do really well with the self-striping yarns, just letting them flow. And if mid-row color changes bother you, you can alternate two different colorways or two different um, cakes of the same uh, colorway and alternate them so that you have more frequent color changes and then those mid-row color changes won't be as obvious but there's nothing wrong with doing a little color control if you want the colors to land just right But if it's a variegated yarn, um, I've seen it look really nice in the six day blankets on the on the cluster rows. Or just using it on one cluster row with some solids. But the six day blanket patterns are extremely versatile. Okay, so that happened mid-round, but I don't really care. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. And that was round two. y'all can just let me know which blankets you want me to do next, but I think I'm feeling called to do Great Granddaddy next. So we'll see. Round three, slip stitch into the next space. So now we're going over here to slip stitch and then chain two, double crochet two together. Okay, and I'm going to mark that. Okay, so the way this round is going to look is you're going to put three double crochet in each of these spaces, three, three, three in the peak spaces, and on each side of the double crochet three together, you're going to have one double crochet three together. Okay, so one here and one here. All right, so that's what's going to happen all the way around. Three double crochet, three double crochet, three, 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 three double crochet, three double crochet, double crochet three together, double crochet three together. Okay, that's how this round is going to look. This is round three. And I love this round because you get to work into the spaces so you can go really fast. Every time I'm talking to my sister on the phone and she's working on a six day crochet project, she's always like, I'm on your favorite round. I'm on your favorite row whenever she's on row three.
I'm not reading what the patterns say to do. And the patterns say double crochet, three double crochet in the next space. We did that. Repeat double crochet in the next space to the top of the mountain. Three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in the chain three space. Three double crochet in the next space, repeat to the valley. Double crochet three together in the spaces before and after the double crochet three together in the row below. So you're doing three double crochet in the spaces. And I wrote it like that <clears throat> so that I didn't have to say, I didn't have to make a new round for each, um, each repeat. Well, the blanket is very repetitive. Are you on specific days or times? I mostly come on it on in the evenings around seven, but I don't have a specific schedule for this. No, I'll try to schedule them. If I do decide on a schedule, I'll ahead of time I'll post it so you all can um, join and be reminded. But no, I just I haven't been feeling great lately, so. I'm just here when I'm here. Sorry. Three, three, three in the peak. Double crochet three together in the space before and after the double crochet three together in row two. Okay, so you're always going to do row two always has one double crochet three together in the center of the bottom. And then round three always has one on each side of that center one. Okay, and three double crochet in all the other spaces.
double crochet three together in the next two spaces. Three double crochet in each of the spaces. Three, three, three in the peak. How's everybody doing? Is anyone still working along with me? Anybody out there? Boy, these colors are... I don't know that last time I ever got excited about beige and gray. This gray is really more of like a slate blue. Pat's here. Amy's here. You working on your blanket, Amy? You're working on a granny blanket. Getting ready. Okay, and round three ends with slip stitch in the top. Mm. 
Not having a good day. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Is your ankle okay? Okay, I have a cheat code for round four. I got, got a little pain and swelling, but I think it's from going out two days in a row. So <clears throat> rather than doing the slip stitch and then chaining up and then single crochet, it doesn't say this in the pattern, but one thing you can do is just skip all that and just go right to the single crochet. Okay, then you can avoid a lot of that mess. All right, and make sure you mark it so you know what you're doing. And don't tell Betty McNitt I told you not to follow the pattern, okay? So then it's single crochet in each stitch around and three single crochet into the chain three space. One, two, three. Okay, and then, so this is round four. So then it does tell you, you should have 10 on each side of the peak and four in the space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? That makes sense because we're working down these guys. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then one, two, three. It's all about crochet. It says I tried the pattern, but I got stuck on row six and I restarted at least four times. Did you, re did you reach out for help in any of my groups or um, here on TikTok? And I have videos to help too. Pattern's really not that difficult, and we do have help available. Is the shawl harder than the blanket? Well, if you weren't able to do the blanket, it might have you might have difficulty with the shawl, yes. <clears throat> but they're about the same. I mean, the difference is the shawl is worked back and forth and the blanket is worked in the round. I 
I think I did all the shells on lives at some point. I need someone to organize my YouTube channel for me. Help people find the videos that I've made. Because I've made a ton. Oh, Scott, put your yarn holder shelves together for you. That's nice. That was nice of him. I can't buy any more yarn until I get free spots. Okay. Okay, here we are back around at the beginning. Shh. Don't tell Betty McNitt we didn't do all that stuff. I need just slip stitch. See how easy that was? And you don't have all that confusion. It's just a little secret something for you all to try. So if you are following along in the pattern, the pattern says you should have 10 and then in parentheses it says 16 single crochet on each side of the peak and three single crochet in each chain three space. So what that 16 is, is we're going to repeat these six rows, rounds rather, and the next time we repeat the round will have 16 instead of 10 on each side. So that's what those parentheses mean. Okay, so we're going on to round five. Slip stitch in the next stitch, chain three. Okay, and this is the same thing. Now it says nine, and in parentheses it says 15. So what that means is this time it's nine, then on the next repeat of round five, it will be 15. Okay, so let's count nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and then five in the peak. One, two, three, four, five. And then uh, ten. One, two, three. Four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and it says in parentheses 16, so that'll be the next repeat. And then see how, remember our hack, it always lines up. And then you skip two, and it should be 10 double crochet to the peak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then five in the peak. Well, my patterns are all called the six day um, whatever, um, and most of them can be done in six days or right around there. You have to work about two to four hours a day, depending on your skill level and how fast you work. I can definitely do a full size star blanket in six days if I work two to four hours at a time. I would say two hours is the minimum. Five in the peak, 10 going up and 10 going down. Skip two and ten going up the other side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then five in the peak. One, two, three, four, five, and ten to go down. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten going up, ten, five, ten, skip two.
skip to 10 double crochet. I got two more points to go till I get to the beginning. I think I'm going to do um, two more rounds and then I'm going to be done for tonight. five in the peak one two three four <clears throat> five okay I'm coming down my last side here one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then slip stitch. into the top of the chain three. Okay, that is round five. Okay, round six. If you were doing round six the normal way, you would just slip stitch in the next stitch and then chain three and then start working double crochet. You'd have 11 double crochet up to the peak and then five in the peak and um, 10 to go up, five in the peak and 11 to go down. So this one counts as one, so it'll be 11 double crochet on each side but I'm doing the ridgy ditch so this is how I'm going to do it when I'm not changing colors so I'm going to take this slip stitch from the back to the front because I want my yarn on the other side of the work you could also do ridgy ditch without turning it off if you want if you do um if you want to stay on the same side and then you would just do back post instead of front post. Well, that didn't go right. You have to bring the working yarn to the front first. That's the problem. Bring the working yarn to the front and then slip stitch from back to front through the work and then turn. 
and then you have to slip stitch once into the first stitch and then once around the front post of the next stitch and then you chain three and then follow the pattern as written replacing the double crochet with front post double crochet so there should be 10 of them one two three four five six seven eight nine Does chain three uh, count as double crochet when you start new row for the setup rows? Yes, it'll tell you exactly what counts as what. So if it says chain three and 10 double crochet, it means chain three and 10 double crochet. It doesn't mean chain three and nine. Okay, now we'll have 11 um, going down the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and skip two, and then eleven going up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11 and then five in the peak and then 11 going down whoops So if you really want your ridge to pop, you can change colors for this round and then you won't have to do, you know, what I did with the um, slip stitching from the back to the front or from front to back or however you want to um, think of that. Um, you can just fasten off and then start a new yarn. Um, if you're flipping like me, you're working front post double crochet. If you don't want to flip, you can work back post double crochet instead. Just work it just like the regular six day blanket, just with back post. Or if you want to work all from the, there's lots of options. You don't want to flip your blanket you could alternate front post and back post to have ridges on both sides
It's the Six Day Supernova Blanket. Trying to go nice and slow so people can follow along. I'm also doing the Ridgy Ditch on round six. <clears throat> I've been crocheting for almost 50 years. Let's see. Sometimes I'm just sitting here crocheting and thinking and I forget that I'm crocheting on a video.
I restart it. Okay. Well, if you need help, just holler. I have a whole Facebook group full of people that will help you. I have YouTube videos. And I'm accessible, you know. You have access to me. If you need help. Well, I appreciate you being here, Betty. I'm trying to be good and just, like, do this one, like, um, and explain everything that I'm doing. Because I don't think I've done this for the supernova yet. But I've been on here. How long have I been on? I've been on for two and a half hours. It's a little bit longer than I usually do. I usually quit after two hours, but um, I was enjoying myself. <laughs> I was feeling good, so I just kept going. <laughs> I'm going to do one more round after this. I would rather sit and do this on lives and chit chat with people than like sit in a room by myself filming content and editing and all that stuff. I mean, the only downside is you all see all every blooper and boo boo and mistake that I make. I learn a lot, even though I'm not making this pattern yet. I'm pausing here and we'll continue a little later on round four. All right, my dear. We'll catch you later. Thanks for following. We'll see if I do this one in six days or not. I'm not going to pressure myself. Okay. And if you're following the pattern, you're going to slip stitch into the top of the um, chain three at the start of the round. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, that was round seven, and I did the ridgy ditch. So to do the ridgy ditch, I'm flipping, and I'm working into the front loop. And then I'm staying on that same side until the next round six, where I'm going to flip it again. So it just makes a little ridge line in the work. And it gives you a two-sided blanket. So some of your rows, some of your work will be facing this way and some of it will be facing that way. So it'll be two-sided. Most people cannot tell the difference between the right side and the wrong side of crochet. A lot of our blankets that we make back and forth, they have right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side. So this is how I'm doing this one. If you really want your texture to pop, you can um, change, the, change the color on that round six.
are you going live tomorrow? I, I probably will. I just haven't been feeling great lately. I um, took a trip a couple weeks ago and I got sick. And I've just been really slow since then. So um, it's my intention to go live. But will I make it? We'll see. We'll see how I do. Okay, round seven. This is going to be my last round of the night. And I'm going to cheat. And I'm not going to do that slip stitch and chain up. I'm just going to go right to the single crochet. That's how I do it now. But the pattern says slip stitch and chain and single crochet in the same space. And I want you to make sure that you mark your single crochet so that when you come back around, you don't slip stitch where you slip stitched and you don't slip stitch into your chain up. Okay, let me make sure I follow the pattern. The pattern says chain one, single crochet in the same stitch in each stitch around, making four single crochet in the center. One, two, three, four. Okay, usually it's three in the peak, but on this one it's four. It's just a little mathematical thing, and it's just how it worked out. So don't let it throw you off. Just do four in the peak and then one single crochet in every stitch around and four in the peak. It's that simple. Um, let's see. And then it says you should have 13 on each side of the peak and four in the center. So if you have 13 on each side, you should have 26 total from peak to peak and then four in the peak. And then if you're following along on the pattern, the pattern has a 19 in parentheses. So the next time we do this round, it will be um, 19. Actually, I should take that out of there because we don't do this, we don't repeat this round. I love single crochet rounds because you don't have to think, you don't have to count. But if you like to think and count, then you should be counting to 13 going down the side and 13 going up. Thirteen. Thirteen, thirteen, and then four in the peak.
Ooh, I'm fading away. I'm getting late. I'm getting tired. Lara Crochets is doing something like you're working in the same color. Very nice. Well, I'll have to check that out when I get off of here to see what they're up to. I'm half asleep here, so I'm ready to go. So I hope this helps everyone get started on a supernova or a supernova ridgy ditch. She's live. Well, I'll check her out after I'm done here. Okay, and if you were smart, you marked that single crochet when you made it at the beginning so you wouldn't be confused. And there we go. Let me get a, um, I like to use those little heart ones, but I'm running out of them. I'm sure I have some other stitch markers around here that are different. Um, so I'm going to put this right here. Um, not because I care, but because you all seem to like to know, like how much did got done on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. I'm not doing a six day challenge. Um, but I'll mark it for the end of the day and I'm not going to, um, work on this one off camera at all. I'm going to do it all on camera so that it'll be on the replay for people to follow along and work along. And um, I'll do my best to get it like all organized and chaptered up so it's easier to follow along with. But um, <clears throat> Okay, so there you go. That is the Six Day Supernova from the beginning up through um, the first repeat up to round seven. And so then the next thing that we do is this blanket continues like the star blanket for another six rounds. So it's like the first repeat and then the first six rounds of the second repeat are exactly the same as the regular 
six day blanket. So if you, um, if you keep going before I, before you see me again, you can go ahead and do rounds two, three, four, five, and six again. And then um, we'll pick up with round seven A. Okay. So hopefully I'll be here tomorrow. If I'm feeling, feeling good and feeling up to it, I'll come back tomorrow and I'll work on this some more and um, we'll see how far we get. All right. Mwah. Bye. Thank you all for coming and being, um, hanging out with me tonight. I'll see you soon. Bye.